Hello, friends! Welcome to another live episode of Coding Garden with CJ. Here's the intro. Hello, hello! So, I just got my 420th subscriber, so in honor, I'm going to do a live episode. I don't typically stream on the weekends, but I thought I would, and I have a pretty cool idea for you. Um, so let's get right into it. So, um, finding and, and using undocumented APIs. So the idea here is um, you're using a website, and maybe they have some data that you'd like to use in an app of your own, but they don't publish an API. They don't have any, like... A developer page or documentation or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to walk through how I approach this problem, um, and we're going to do it with weed maps. <laughs> so uh, if you didn't know, I am uh, I do live in Denver, Colorado, where recreational marijuana is legal. Um, I'm not going to be smoking any marijuana on the stream, but we are going to use their website in honor of my 420th subscriber. So thank you to all of my viewers, 420th, 20 subscribers. We're making it, we're making it happen. We're gonna get into this. Um, it, it's also not gonna be a super long live stream. Um, the idea is we'll find the site, so we're gonna use weed maps. Um, we'll watch the network traffic to see if we can detect any API calls. Um, once we do find an endpoint, I'll build a really simple Vue.js app that uses that data inside of it. So let's get into it. Um, also, uh, if you're watching live, please throw a message in the chat. Howdy, Jason, welcome. Uh, this is gonna be a fun time. All right, um, just a second there. Oh, actually, HyperSwitch isn't running. Quick plug for HyperSwitch. Um, if you've ever seen me switching Windows, uh, it's a Mac app that actually shows the uh, thumbnails of the apps that you're using. Cool. Uh, so you visit a website like Weed Maps, and um, you maybe you want to make your own app that uses their data. Um, so you might search Google for something like Weed Maps API or something like that. And I've, I've searched. I haven't really found anything. They do have a GitHub account. Um, I've looked through some of the repos. They don't really have any documentation on how to actually uh, make API requests uh, to their servers. Um, and for a, a lot of places, they, they don't want to because um, then they'd have to support it or they'd have to compete with people using their data on some other website. Um, this is for informational purposes only and really just, just for fun. Um, so on Weed Maps, you can go to a map and see uh, dispensaries in your area. And I believe they have them all over the US, anywhere where uh, medical or recreational marijuana is legal. Um, yeah, so they have the entire United States uh, and some of Canada. Um, and basically, they list dispensaries. They have menus for the dispensary, um, information about the dispensary, images, all, all kinds of good information. Um, but let's say I want to build my own basic site that kind of just shows the data like we see over on the left-hand side. I want to see a list of dispensaries in the Denver area. Um, so first, I start browsing the website. And when I get to a page that I know might have the data that I want, I open up the DevTools. Um, and in the DevTools, um, if you're not familiar with it, there is this tab called Network. And you can actually see all of the traffic that happens. So if I refresh this page, we'll see requests that go out to uh, images, external JavaScript files, um, the Google Maps API, all kinds of stuff. Um, and this can be a lot to look through. But if you click on XHR, this filters it by uh, XML HTTP requests. So this is any AJAX requests that are happening on the page. And typically, if a website is using uh, an API of their own, they're probably using AJAX to make those requests. Um, and so you'll notice when I filtered for XHR, we see a few things pop up. Um, and if we click on them, we can click preview and kind of see the data that came back. Um, so that's empty data, but this was a request to uh, regions, so that might be regions that they're uh, listing dispensaries in. Um, and if we look at this one, this is an API request to location include. Let's see what we got back. Um, so this is the actual uh, request that went out to get my current location. It's probably based on IP address, so it, it's centered around Denver. 
Um, this one, which I was looking at earlier, is super interesting. This is a GraphQL uh, endpoint. Um, and if you're not familiar with GraphQL, they actually have a visual browser. Um, and so if you open this URL, you actually have full access to their GraphQL uh, schema, like list deals, list menus, and stuff like that. I don't know if they meant for that to be open, but that's also really cool. Uh, I'm not going to deal with that. But this one is probably the one that I'm looking for. So if we look at the URL, it's got a bunch of junk in it, but it's slash listing, slash filter, and then a bunch of params in there. Um, if you scroll down to the bottom, um, you can see basically uh, this is uh, URI encoded, all of these percent signs, so it's kind of hard to read. But if you look at the query string parameters, uh, the dev tools actually parse that for you so we can see uh, what data is actually being sent. Um, so this is searching for deliveries and dispensaries in the North Glen Thornton area. Um, the page size is 100, meaning how many results to return. Um, and if we click preview and we look at data, we actually see all of the listings from the left-hand side. So these are, this is all of the information that the page is using to populate this map. Um, let's see. If I start to, I believe, like zoom in, so let me like hide these dev tools real quick or make them a little bit smaller. Um, as I move around this map, you'll notice new requests are going out um, because each time it's essentially sending a new bounding box to the server so that it only returns dispensaries within like what I can see on the map right now. So if I zoom out a little bit, you'll see that request went out. Um, and if we look at that, actually I'll just open this in a new tab. We can kind of look at it. Um, Lots of data, but here we are. So in this region of the map that I'm looking at right now, there are 375 dispensaries. Um, and we can see that the listing data is in there. Um, and then let's kind of inspect this URL. Um, so in the browser, there's this method called uh, decode URI component. And this will actually take all of those percent signs and turn it into something that uh, is readable. So if I do that, uh, now, well, let's store it in a variable. So let's say like var URL equals that. Uh, and then if we log the URL, it is kind of cutting it off. Let's see, can I copy link address? And then let's look at that inside of Atom. Cool. And so now instead of all those percent signs and stuff like that, we can actually see the data that it's sending the server. So uh, for one, it's giving a bounding box. I believe this is probably like uh, top left corner and then bottom right corner, and essentially any, uh, and this is latitude, longitude, any dispensaries within that bounding box are gonna get returned in these results. Um, we also have page size and actual size. Um, so let's, let's play around with these parameters. So um, if I change the, uh, let's change the page size to one. This is my break timer, let's take a quick break. Look away from the screen, take a quick stretch. Whew. Um, yeah, so let's change page size to one, just to see if it works. And now when we get back the data, it only has one result in it. So we can actually uh, request more. So let's, let's try to push the limit. So it says there's 375 total. Let's try to set the page size to 375 and see what we get. Error, page size 375 exceeds the maximum value of 150. So I have figured out that ultimately I can only request 150 at a time. Um, so I'll do 150. Um, and I probably want to set the, I'm not sure what the difference between size and page size is, but let's see. Set both of those to 150. Um, then I get back a bunch of data. Um, I'm using this uh, plugin for Chrome extension called uh, JSON Viewer. Um, and it actually stores the JSON in the window. So I could do window.json.data.listings.length. And I should see 150. So we actually did get back 150 results. Um, now the next thing is, okay, if there are 375 total listings, how do I get the next 150? Um, this is just a guess, and it's probably going to change based on like what APIs you find. Um, but let's just try throwing and page equals uh, two on there. Um, this did give back some data, but let's compare it. So the first value in this array for page two is kind pain management, medical only. But if we set it to page one, the first result is not that. So my guess is, that's, is that that is working. So I can essentially request um, each page, 150 
uh, listings each time to get to a total of 375. So if I change this to like page three, that would be, uh, page one would be 150, page two would be 300. This would make it 450. So my guess of, is if I do page four, it's empty and it is. Um, and so this is an example like, with a very specific website, but if you're trying to figure this out on, a, on another website, I encourage you to do the same thing. Like it's not gonna hurt to just play around with the URL and like see what data you get back. Um, and for me, this is, this is pretty much the data that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna build a simple app that lists out the dispensaries and then link, links to their page. Um, just to show how this could work on another page. So like, let's go to an actual uh, page for a dispensary. Um, we're looking at the XHR tab and we are seeing more requ requests going out. Um, and this is sweet. So this is a request for the menu. Let's open that in a new tab. Um, so for the listing that has this name, we're getting back the menu. And so we get all the same listing information that we saw over here. Um, and actually this listing information does not contain full hours. It has today's hours, but the full listing information has, um, I guess all the hours and also hours of operation, today's deal, um, and then let's minimize that. And then categories is the, are the actual categories of the menu. So uh, there's indica, there's sativa, um, there's hybrid, there's edibles. And then each one of these has all the data associated with those menu items. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so this, this is my basic process for figuring this stuff out. I have found tons and tons of undocumented documented APIs. Um, and uh, one thought is like before you decide to go the route of like scraping a website or something like that, just see if there actually is an API under the hood. Um, looks like there's also a deal endpoint. Maybe that'll return you the deals for this dispensary. Let's see. Yeah, so it has the listing ID. And over here, if we look at the listing, its ID is 35, uh, 35,891. That's the same ID here. Um, and my guess is that's this is like the deal of the day for that specific dispensary. So all kinds of cool endpoints. Um, I think the, the one I'm gonna focus on are the listings ones within a specific bounding box. And let's just make a basic API, a basic web page that shows this data. So I'm gonna use Vue.js for this. Uh, so let's use the Vue CLI. We're gonna do Vue init. We'll use uh, Webpack and let's call this uh, dis. Dispenser, I don't know how to spell dispensary. <laughs> dispensary, dispensary, that looks right. Dispensary listings. Go. Uh, list dispensaries in your area. I probably spelled that wrong. Doesn't matter, spelling isn't that important, is it? We can get a spell checker in here. Uh, we'll do routing, we'll just have one basic route. We'll use ESLint and use Airbnb. Uh, no unit tests, no end-to-end -end tests, and use NPM. And a reminder for anybody joining late, the reason I'm using Weed Maps is because I have my 420th subscriber. It's a great day. Super fun. Okay, so we found the site, we use Weed Maps. Uh, we watch the network traffic. The thing to note when watching net network traffic is you can filter by XHR. And that will only show you the requests that are happening when the page loads. Um, and so if X XHR requests are happening, um, it's highly likely that there's some API that the site is using. Um, we found several endpoints. We found a listing endpoint, so listings within a bounding box. So you could give a uh, basically two corners of a square and it will give you all the listings inside that square. Um, and then we found an individual listing um, that was by, um, in programmer terms, it's known as the slug. So if we looked back at um, the listing information here, so this right here, notice the name of the dispensary, that is known as the, the slug. If we look inside of here, uh, the value slug has that, that value. Um, it's typically like, on a website that has uh, a URL with like a username in it, the username is typically the slug. Um, but when I was messing around with this earlier, I also found if you throw the ID in here instead of the slug, you can also get back the menu. Let's try that though. Boom. 
and that gives you this, the same the same menu. So we found listings, individual listing. We also found uh, the menu. We also found deals. All kinds of cool endpoints that we would have never known about had we not opened the dev tools. Okay, so my view app generated. Uh, let's go into that directory and just start it up. Okay, it's loaded. We got our basic Vue.js app. Let's go in and rip some stuff out. Um, so in my source directory, in my app.view, I'm gonna get rid of that view logo. I'll get rid of all these default styles. And then in my components, let's change this hello world route to be empty. We'll just call this dispin. Sorry, listings. I hope I spelled that right. <laughs> okay, that goes away. I'm just removing the styles, removing the initial data, just getting it ready so I can uh, build out the app. Uh, let's rename this component to be uh, listings.view. We'll rename it here. And you'll notice Webpack is throwing an error because we need to update our route. So initially when it generates this, uh, it defaults to the hello world route at slash. I want that to be uh, listings, which I just created. Cool. And so now if we go to the app, we see that. Uh, let's add boot swatch to get some basic styling. Um, let's use something green. Maybe minty. Lumen. Um, yeah, let's use minty. Grab the CSS, and then I'm going to take the CSS and put it in my index.html right there. So throw a link, have the CSS there, save it, back to the browser, refresh, got some basic styles, sweet. Uh, back in app.view, let's set this up. So let's give, um, let's give the router view a class of container, because uh, that will push that in. And then let's add a nav bar. So let's go to Bootstrap and grab the code for that. Minty, yeah. <laughs> um, components, nav bar, and I want a super basic nav bar. This one. So, um, and the reason I put class container on the router view is because I want the nav bar to be all the way across the top, and then the uh, stuff on the inside to be pushed in a little bit. Um, dispensary listings. Cool. Um, let's see what we got. We do have a nav bar. Um, it's kind of hard to see. Let's go back to Boot Swatch. Is it supposed to be that color? I guess we could probably set a color. Yeah, I want I want a nav bar like that. What do I got to do? Um, nav bar dark background primary. Let's try it. Hey, that's cool. Um, and then also let's give this uh, container a little bit of breathing room. We can do margin top three, and pushes it down a little bit. Very cool. Okay, so now let's actually call our API. So inside of my listings component, I'm gonna tap into the mounted event. And uh, when the component is mounted, I'm going to load the data. And so I'll define a method called load. And this is where we'll make our API request. Um, just because I haven't done this in previous videos, I'm actually going to write the API request in a separate file and bring it in. Because typically in larger applications, that's what you want to do to keep things organized. So I'm going to create a new folder, call it lib for library. Inside of uh, lib, I'll create a file called uh, api.js. And then this is just going to export an object that has some methods on it. So we'll do uh, export default object. And this will say uh, get listings. And initially, um, what's this pointing about? 
Um, initially, we're just going to just use this hard-coded uh, URL that I found. And then later on, we can probably add in, like, um, set a location. I don't know. That might be too complex for this live stream. But we could potentially say, choose a location and then find two points that are like 100 miles in both directions and then use that uh, bounding box or something like that. We'll just use the hard-coded data initially and make sure we can get some data on the page. So let's create a variable up here, call it API URL, set it equal to that big thing. Um, and let's just throw on the end, we'll say and page equals, and get listings will take in a page number. So here we're just going to return a fetch of the API URL uh, plus the page number at the end. So that way, uh, if we pass in one, we get back page one. If we pass in two, we get back page, back page two, etc. cetera. Uh, then I'll take the response, turn it into JSON. And that should be it there. What does this want? Trailing comma. OK. Um, so that's my API, and so now let's bring this into the component. So up at the top in the JavaScript, we'll say uh, import API from, um, and we can do uh, at slash lib slash uh, API. Um, this is uh, built in when you use the Webpack template. It automatically knows that when you use the at sign to start looking at the top of the source directory and go down from there. So I'll use that. Um, and then inside of our load method, let me add my trailing commas, we'll do uh, api.getListings for page one, just right, just right now. Um, and then we should get back the result. And let's just log that result. So back to the browser, open the dev tools, refresh. This.load is not a function. I called it method. It should be methods. Anybody catch that at home? I bet you did. Um, did I not invoke the JSON? So this is logging uh, a method called JSON. My guess is in my API, I forgot to invoke it. So we need to invoke that, which actually turns it into JSON. And we get back the data. Sweet. So inside of there, there's data and then listings. Um, so let's take a quick break. Um, to make it easier on the uh, component when it's making this request, uh, inside of the API, I'm just going to return this array instead of this object with the data property and all of that. So right here, we'll do a dot then. Uh, we get back the result. And ultimately, we want to return result.data.listings. And so that way, inside of the component, when we get the data, it will just be an array of uh, listings. So now makes the request and we get back just an array of listings. Very cool. Um, we do have a console statement, but it wants a fat arrow right there. I'm trying to get rid of these linter errors. Cool. Um, cool. So we log the data. Now let's um, add them all to the page. So um, for that, I believe a listing has an avatar image. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, cool. So uh, if you were watching the live stream yesterday, I used a thing in Bootstrap called a media list. Uh, I'm going to use the same thing because the, uh, the thumbnail could be the uh, image that we got. This will be the title of the dispensary. And then maybe we can throw like the description and some hours below it. So let's grab this, throw this in our view like that. Uh, get rid of everything except for one list item. And then this is the thing that we want to repeat. So on this list item, I'll do a v4. We'll say listing in listings. And so now on my data, I need a listings property. We'll set that to an array. And then when I get back the data, uh, let's call this listings. We'll say. Uh, this dot listings so the listings in the component equals the listings that I got back from the API 
And so we should see a bunch of them, <laughs> um, but we need to actually add the info. So uh, avatar image dot small URL is going to be the SRC. So I'll bind the SRC to listing dot avatar image dot small underscore URL. And wow, that's actually pretty big. <laughs> that's that's okay though. Um, let's give the list item a little bit of breathing room. So on the li, I'll do. Um, I can't forget if it was mark. Let's do like margin all three. Will that work? Might just be margin three. Yeah. So I'll do it. Um, and then we want to throw the name of the dispensary. So that's just um, name. So right here we'll do uh, listing dot name in handlebars because we want the actual value. Boom. That's awesome. Cool. Um, let's link the name to the um, the actual uh, weed maps page. So this is web URL. So I'm going to add a little anchor tag. The href is going to be uh, listing web URL, and we'll throw the name inside of that. Um, we'll bind the href so it uses that value. So now we got that, and let's make it open in a new window. So if I do uh, target equals blank, uh, now when I click a listing, it'll open its page in a new window, which is cool. I can click any one of these. Very cool. Um, let's just add some basic info. So let's do uh, today's hours. We'll also do, we'll do address. Um, and Bootstrap has a thing called a description list. I want to do something like that. Yes, yeah, so we'll say like address, uh, hours, today, and then the value there. And so that's simply just a DL. Um, and so that's the body. Let me make that look right. Okay. And then I'll do a this thingy. And then just be sure to add the closing DL. And that should look like that. Cool. And so I want to say uh, address. And then that's going to be listing dot address, I think. Let's see. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and then we want uh, hours today. So I'm going to grab those two little guys. And then I want, uh, well, today's hours. Let's see what that property was. Um, Today's hours stir. Cool. Um, license type. So this this is important um, because there are different types of dispensaries. So uh, recreational allows anyone over twenty one to buy. Medical, you need to be a registered patient there. So let's put that as maybe the first thing. So we'll put that there. We'll do uh, type. And then we'll throw a listing dot license type there. Um, I want to capitalize that. Um, I think there's a CSS property that will capitalize it. Let's see, CSS capitalize. If not, we can write some JavaScript. Text transform. Capitalize. Look at that. So let's add a class to this thing called uh, capitalize. And then down in my style, well actually, let's see, is that built into Bootstrap? No, it's not, okay. Uh, so let's add a uh, class called capitalize that sets the text transform to capitalize. Look at that, very cool. Um, and then the intro body is the actual description. So let's throw that below all of this stuff. Um, You'll notice though that it's HTML. So I'm going to show you something interesting with Vue where we can actually set the HTML of an element. But let's just throw it in there to begin with. So below the description, I'll add a p tag, and then inside of it, I'll do uh, listing dot intro body. And right now, it we see the actual HTML. Um, we want to set the inner HTML. So here's what we'll do: instead of doing it as handlebars, you can do uh, I believe it's vbind HTML. Let's see what happens. 
nothing happens. Am I getting any errors? A lot of stuff happening here. <laughs> okay, uh, let's look it up. UJS bind HTML. Template syntax. A lot of HTML, um, raw HTML. Uh, V-HTML, I guess, is what I want. So I'll do uh, V-HTML is that. And essentially, that will take all of the uh, bold and P tags and stuff like that and actually render it inside of it. So yeah, so Terrapin Care Station now shows up as bold. Um, and I guess for these others, they didn't might not have had some, um, some other styling, but that's looking cool to me. Um, let me do a hard refresh so I get rid of these warnings and let's try to fix them. So I need a key on my li because I'm repeating it. So let's just do uh, key is uh, listing.id. Do another refresh. Um, no errors. Very cool. Um, let's, let's look in our view dev tools again to look at that data, see if there's anything else we want to add. Um, and then the last thing I'll do is add pagination. So remember, this is only the first 150 results. I want to show like next page so you can see the next set of results. Um, so we look in app, we look in listings. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Um, so we have the address, we've got the description, we've got the type, we've got the name. Um, there's a ranking, reviews. I think it's good enough. Um, yeah, that's good enough. So let's add pagination. So, and also let's not do 150 on a single page because this is a, a lot of scroll. So let's do like 10 per page and then show buttons for all of the different pages. Um, I believe Bootstrap has a, a pagination thingy. So that gets us a nice little thingy look that looks like that. We're gonna have to hook it up and make it work ourselves, but um, I like that. Let's use this one. Well, yeah, I like those little little icons. Those are actually showing up because of uh, an HTML character code. But let's check it out. So we're gonna throw this right above the UL. See what we get. That's there. Um, let's center it. What if I do uh, class equals text dash center? Is that all I need? No. Um, it does have class text center. Let's look up centering in Bootstrap. Horizontal centering. That's what I want. Um, Bootstrap also includes an MX auto class for horizontally centering fixed width block level content. <laughs> so let's do that. So we'll add a style and a class to it. So we can get rid of that um, text center. But if we throw in class MX auto style, we'll do width as 100%. Hopefully that will get detected. And so if it fills up the whole thing, come on. If I were to do, let's do like 500 pixels. Yeah, <laughs> so we actually need our parent to have a width of 100% and its parent to have a width of 100%. So let's do a width, uh, we'll do uh, 80 view width, maybe? Nope. I could also flexbox it. Let's not worry about that because <laughs> I give up. Okay, so we're gonna leave that there. Uh, but here's what we need to do. So we need some logic that basically detects the number of pages. So let's set my page size to be just 10. So I'm gonna set this to 10. Um, and I think by default we know, we'll, we'll look at it in the dev tools, but so yeah. So now when the page size is 10, I'm only seeing the first 10 listings, that's cool. Um, 
But if we look at that, when we got back the um, the data, so let's look at uh, listings. Um, it gives us the total number of listings. So we can use that number to calculate uh, how many pages there are and how many uh, buttons to add here. So inside the API, let's, let's say, um, let's create a variable. Let's say like let uh, total results equal, let's start it off at zero. But then if we get back some data, we're going to uh, set that to be the number of results. So total results equals result dot meta dot total um, listings. Um, what's happening here? That needs to look like that. Uh, we're going to return that. And actually, let's return an object that has listings as that. And then, actually, yeah, so now we don't need this global variable. Um, we can actually um, pass it back. And so here we'll say total listings is that. And so uh, now we have a trailing comma. What's this complaining about? Unexpected. Oh. OK, so my linter, because I'm immediately returning a value, it wants me to do this. Weird, right? And what's this complaining about? Um, oh, no, I need, I need more parentheses. I need parentheses around the object because it's returning an object. And what is this complaining about? And then one more parenthesis. Whoa. And then no parentheses around the, the param because it's a single value. OK, if you're not familiar with fat arrow syntax, this, this, is, this is what's happening. So this is a fat arrow function that is returning an object. And because on a fat arrow, when you have curly braces, the JavaScript engine thinks you're defining the body of the function. But because we're returning an object, we need to wrap those curly braces in parentheses so that it knows that it needs to return that instead of uh, actually have a function definition. Stir on that for a little bit. Um, and let's make this camel case, total listings. OK, so because I updated that, now on my component, let's take a quick break. Whew. OK, so before I was saying uh, this.listings equals list listings. Now I want to say uh, this.listings equals result.listings. And then let's also create a property for, um, do we call it total listings? We'll initialize that to 0. But when we get back the data, we'll say this.totallistings equals result.totallistings. Um, and so we also have a page size. And that is right now 10. Um, and let's actually pass that into the, the API. So we, we're not hard coding it. We can basically say, um, get page 1 with a page size of 10. And so now in our API, we also want to take in the uh, page size. Um, but now this gets a little more interesting because we need to specify both the page size. Um, and the page. So I'm going to set my URL to be that. And then we're going to need to get a little more tricky in here. So um, basically, the URL looks like this. And then we're adding on to the end of it. And page size equals page size. And page equals uh, page. Um, is not camel case. OK, that's a linter rule. I'll make it not camel case for now. And something's broken. Can't read property listings of undefined. That's returning an object with a listings property. 
Thanks, thanks, Brandon. Yeah, so Brandon just mentioned he normally does back-end stuff, but saw my uh, view live stream last night. Uh, if you didn't haven't seen it, check it out. I built uh, some basically three apps that got successively a little bit more complex with Vue.js. Um, tonight, I'm kind of just hacking around. <laughs> didn't have a, like a total plan, but we are just making this app work. Um, I am getting an error, though. It is saying, cannot read property listings of undefined. Right here. Let's look at our network and see if that request actually worked. Do a hard refresh. Maybe the API has started throttling me. Invalid params. A page value of one is not a valid integer. What? This was working a second ago. <laughs> um, size is 100. Let's, let's just double check. So our, our URL needs to look like this. So we can say uh, page size equals, and then page equals one. That works. Let's log this URL to see what we're actually, oh, there's a semicolon in there. And a quote. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now the data comes back. Cool. Um, and no errors. Cool. So I'm requesting it, but now I'm also sending back the array and the number of total listings. We're passing in the page size and the page. Now let's do some math to figure out how many buttons we need to show across the top. So um, by default, this thing has um, basically just three in it, but I want to dynamically repeat this list item uh, for every item, for, for each page that will essentially exist. So we gotta do some math. Um, so let's do v4 uh, page in total pages. And so I'll have to define a property on my instance called total pages, and we'll throw the page in there. And so let's start um, total pages as zero, but then when we get back the data, we can do some maths. So we can say uh, this dot total pages equals uh, total listings divided by uh, this dot page size. So um, and then we want to round that down. I think I don't know. Let's see what happened though. Um, invalid array. In view, it is possible to iterate up to a, uh, a value. So I want to do that. Let's look at Vue.js docs for um, like v4. v4 with a range. That's what I want. Uh, v4 in in 10. So that might be it. So because I'm not rounding this, so let's do um, math.floor of total listings divided by a page size. So if total listings is 375, let's do some quick maths, is 375, and our page size is 10, then ultimately we need, um, no, we need to round up. Because page 38 would contain the last five listings. Math.ceiling, let's see. Still invalid. Let's look at our dev tools. We can see actually what uh, total pages is not getting written. This dot total pages equals total listings. Oh, total listings. Weird. Total listings is 375, but total pages is not getting calculated. Why? Let's log this. Pages. Math.ceiling is not a function. Well, why not? Okay. Uh, JavaScript, math. Oh, math.seal, I think it is. Yeah, that's the one. 
that's why. So math.seal. And look at that. <laughs> 38 total pages. Um, that's cool. We definitely don't want it to go off like that. We kind of want to like wrap it. Um, I wonder if Bootstrap has anything for that. Um, so we were looking at pagination. Sizing, alignment. Let's do paginate. We'll do pagination small, but my guess is we're still going to have way too many pages. Uh, pagination, pagination small. A little bit tinier. Getting a call. I'm going to have to end the, the live stream soon, but I am not going to finish without getting these buttons working. Um, <laughs> let's just do a larger page size so it doesn't go that big. Let's do a page size of 20. Uh, because then we only have 19 pages of results. Cool. So let's get these buttons working. Um, first, let me get rid of my linter errors. Uh, I need a key on this one. So we'll say uh, key is page. Refresh. Um, Unexpected console statement. Infix operators must be spaced. I think it wants my division to have a space in it. Is that what that means? Let's see. And we can also get rid of that console log. Cool, no errors. Okay. <laughs> um, so now what we want to happen is like when I click two, we should see the next set of listings. So let's do that. Basically, um, each one of these anchor tags is going to need to have a, uh, a click on it. So we'll do right here, uh, at click, get page, and pass in the page. And so down here on my methods, I need a get page that takes in the page. Um, and actually, we should be passing in page size right here because we hard coded that. So this dot page size, um, and get page is basically going to do this. But when the app loads, we need to say uh, this dot get page one, and we'll pass in the page. So this should still work. We should still get page one. But if I click this. We get page two, and if I click this, we get page three. Cool. Um, and page 19, which also works. Um, is there, yeah, okay, because I did math.ceiling, so it rounded up, I believe. Um, last thing is, I want to highlight which page we're on right now. So in pagination, there is this active class. And so basically, I want to set this, is that on the, that's on the list item. I want to set a, a, a class of active on this list item if the current page is uh, the page of this button. <laughs> so um, let's bind the class. So uh, in view, you can basically say, when some expression is true, um, add this class. So We'll add the active class when, uh, let's call it current page is equal to page. Um, and let's rename this to be, well, actually, we need a current page. So current page will start off as 1. And uh, when you get a page, we'll set this.current page to be the page. Cool. Did that work? Hey. Hey now. Look at me. We're clicking pages. <laughs> Fun times. Um, awesome. So we've done it. We have found an undocumented API, probably spent more time building the app and actually finding the API, but that was still fun. Um, and we can click these. We can get out to the Weed Maps page, which is great. Um, Last thing, just for aesthetics, I want to add a like a little loading image because you'll notice when I click this, it doesn't instantly load. It has to make that request. So let's find a funny GIF to show while the stuff is loading. 
Uh, let's go to jiffy.com and let's search for 420. Do 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 do. <laughs> um, that's great. The grandma smoking. I think I think that's perfect. That's exactly what we'll use. Um, so as we're getting the results, she'll be taking a hit, and then when the results pop up, she'll go away. Um, so I'll just grab this URL. Cool. And basically, what I want is uh, below the pagination. So. Um, the UL is the all of the listings, and I only want to show this if we're not loading. So I'll, I'll put a V if on here. So V if not loading, and then I'll create a property on my data. So I'll say loading is initially true, like when the app loads, true. And then after we get the data, this.loading is false. But right above that UL, I will add uh, a nice little, nice little div, um, throw in that awesome image, and um, let's give this a class of uh, loading image so we can center that image. And this will be v if loading. So when we're loading, show the image. Let's try it. It's loading way too fast. Cool. Um, Let's just have loading always set to true so we can see what it looks like. What's happening? We have our body, we have our div. We have div class loading image. That's the source. Why is it not showing up? Do you know? I don't know. <laughs> um, let's just get rid of this if loading. Come on, I just want to see the image. That that image works, right? Weird. Um, let's let's just make it happen. So, let's say a loading image. Um, image, I'll say width, 200 pixels, height, take a quick break, reach into the sky, look away from the screen, take a hit from the bong, we've got 420 subscribers, height is auto, and, okay, this is lame, why is my image not showing up? Any guesses for the, the people watching the live stream out there? Jiffy allows embedding, right? Come on. Well, actually, um, 420. Doo 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 doo. Maybe we'll use the MP4. <laughs> so let's instead of an image let's do a video with a source I'm really curious why that's not working if I add this video in and it doesn't work I'm gonna give it up for now um, I think you can do autoplay and then I think loop is a thing ha <laughs> sweet <laughs> cool um, so <laughs> we have our loading image uh, and I can just get rid of that class. I'm not doing anything special with that. But we did want to say v if uh, loading, then show the video. Otherwise, don't. And so when the loading is done, we set loading to false. OK, so we click a page. Um, let's do this. So this is a nice little UX trick. Um, a lot of times, the data can come back so fast that the user might not even notice that anything happened. Like, the images are changing in our case. So like we know that data is actually coming back. 
but let's set a timeout. So we actually do show the image, the loading image for like at least a second. So before setting loading to false, we'll just do a set timeout, a simple little arrow function for, let's do like one second, then we'll set loading to false. So when the page loads, you'll see that and that pops up. And if I click something, oh, we have to set loading to true here. So loading, get some data, loading, get some data, <laughs> loading, get some data. Sweet, we have done it. Um, cool. Um, that's it for the live stream. I got to go eat pizza with a friend. But quick review of what we did. Um, main thing was inspecting the XHR traffic on lead maps for anything that looked like an API call. And then once we found it, we kind of just messed around with the URL to get some new data back. Um, and then once we had it, it's just a matter of building an app around that API. Um, we did some cool things with pagination where uh, we actually had the pages up at the top. And so each time we click a different page, it's making a new API request for that page of results. So yeah, we did it. 420 subscribers, woo, <laughs> sweet. Um, thanks everyone for watching. This was a, uh, a shorter live stream than usual, but hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me play you out. Awesome. Thanks again for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. It will get past the 420 number, but it was fun while it lasted. Um, thanks for watching. I will uh, throw a link in the description to this code so you can use it for yourself. Um, have a great evening.